Good afternoon, everybody. It is September 27th here today. Um, a little bit of update. Obviously, the swathing is done. You guys already know that. And um, we are basically just trying to hurry up and wait. Uh, it's really nice weather right now. It's uh, a bit of a breeze, 30K wind, I believe. And uh, it's a beautiful 22 degree day. I think tomorrow's supposed to be 25, which is almost uh, not normal temperatures for this time of year. And back home at South Farm, I think they're reaching 28 degrees Celsius. So again, a little warmer than normal, which we'll take it because we've had about three weeks of wet weather and uh, everything is damp and wet. It was great for swathing, but it is not good for combining. So we're done swathing. Now we're just trying to wait for that canola to dry down and cure up. And we're gonna be waiting a little while. I think we were running around testing some of our stuff that we've had down for two weeks now. Uh, the next era has been down for a little over two weeks now. So uh, it tested 14.3 and then we went back and tested it and it was 13.6 and we're like, okay, let's go try the Invigor Canola. It was down for two weeks as well, the stuff that we first started on and uh, it tested 13.3. And then, so we've been testing canola so much here. Uh, we're gonna have a semi load of very tough canola. And um, just so you know, I think it's like nine, five or nine or 10 or something like that is dry for canola. So anyways, it's too tough. And yes, we do have a dryer. Yes, we do, but it is not operational yet. I think SAS Power is supposed to be showing up around end, end of October, end of October, middle of November. Um, we're in queue, so we're waiting. So yes, we do not have a functioning dryer as of yet. So it is a bit of a pain in the butt. So I was like, well, let's go and try those oats. And we just come off testing those oats and they are sitting at 16.3 and dry for those is 13.5. I'm gonna sell them for, they are milling oats. Um, so we have nothing that we can combine and it sucks because everybody else is combining and maybe they are taking some tough grain, that could be true. Uh, maybe they have dryers or run into a dryer. Maybe their canola is a little bit more cured. It's been down longer. Uh, I just talked to my uh, neighbor, my neighbor Murray there. He's uh, taking canola and sitting about eight and a half, nine. And I'm like, oh, if only I could have canola at eight and a half, nine. But um, we got nothing to do. So what we are going to do is we're going to go help uh, Greg, my father-in-law, because he's taking some wheat that's sitting around that 14 pot, so that's dry. Uh, it's been in swaths for a long time. Uh, he's got a lot of wheat to go, so if we can't go, we're gonna go help him out. I'm just gonna take the combine for right now and just kind of join in. And uh, if we need extra support equipment, well, then we'll see. Right now, the guys are uh, working on the uh, wet auger and the dry auger, put those electric motors on so that way, if we do get power, we do have a dryer, a working dryer. That is our goal. Of course, I'm not sure how that's gonna work because those wet and dry bins are gonna be full of next era, but uh, I guess we'll cross that bridge. So that's the plan. We're gonna go cut with the case combines, uh, some 9120 case combines. Uh, we're also picking up 40 foot swabs as well. He has 40 foot head headers on his case swathers. I gotta go find him. I really don't know where he is. Uh, Cause um, like we'll help each other out, but we don't farm together. Like I don't farm with my father-in-law. He doesn't farm with me. I don't farm his land. He doesn't farm my land. And uh, we're two complete separate identities. And, uh, but you know, if I got nothing to do, I'll go help him out. If he's got nothing to do, he'll come help me out. That's, that's what kind of does. So let's go see if we can't find him. See what mischief we can get ourselves into. All right, we're just nicely getting showed, or nicely getting going here at the field that we just showed up at. Um, that's one of my, Extended families, 9120s. Everyone's just kind of getting moved to the same field here. So uh, we're gonna start cracking into it. And we're off. Some of this stuff, some of it is uh, kind of stuck to the ground. Some of it sprouted on the ground, um, which is good because we don't want that stuff anyway. This 
stuff's been out for about, uh, in the rain for about three weeks, you gotta remember that. And it doesn't look half, half bad. It's not much color, but not much color to it, but, uh, I've seen worse. This stuff's running around 45. Still pretty dang good. And yes, it is hard red spring wheat. combines are out here. Uh, Ashton was just riding around with me in chapel here uh, prior to me starting this video clip. Oh. We've been in the mustard and flirting with a lot of red. Uh, some of the straw is just barely dry. Um, the stuff is around, uh, well right now it's reading 13.6 which is surprising because maybe it's because we're on this hilltop but uh, I, the first round that I completed right over there was 16.3 and you definitely notice it. Anyways, Mike can uh, X9 do the same amount of acres as both 9120s combined? I don't know, I really don't care. Uh, I'm not gonna get in a race with my mother-in-law who's driving one combine and my father-in-law who's driving the other combine. Um, nobody wants you to come to their field and be like, okay, let's race. I just want to see how good this combine is. That's a pretty arrogant thing to do. So uh, I'm here helping them out um, while my stuff is drying and then they will return the favor when they finish and we are going to be continuing the combine. So I'm not here to race anybody. I'm not here to be like compare, compare, compare uh, when I'm helping somebody else out. Now, if I want the demo a case combine, say a 9250 or something like that, and we put it on my field, absolutely, we'll compare the heck out of it. But you're not gonna go and compare with someone else's combine in their field. That's not a very nice thing to do. So, uh, we're just going to combine. We're gonna keep it on the conservative side to make sure we don't throw any out the back. Um, I would push it probably harder on my fields. But when I'm helping somebody else out, I am at no interest of that, okay? Just so we're all on the same page here. Our grain cart is coming. Ooh. So we got a few swathery issues here. Better take this kind of slow. way right through it and go done one thing I don't like about picking up swabs is we really need to dump going this way pretty hard to do when you have a swath there because we're going up and back over here uh, I'd have to start from that side and the other combines are on that side it's not like straight cutting you can just wheel around wherever but the swabs always get in your way that's what I've noticed 
And as you can clearly see, we don't have a very straight pass anywhere in any of this stuff up here. So we pretty much just stop and dump what we need to dump. Because I refuse to run those uh, tractors in the dust. I just won't do it. That and I don't want them going over 10 miles an hour either. 10 miles an hour, that's top speed. Top speed for the grain cart. Yes, I know it's windy. I just stopped and jumped in, jumped into the tank here. We can check this sample. So, it's always some fine tuning to do. What do we got here? A couple cracks. A couple unthrashed. Color looks mediocre. Oh, a couple sprouts. See that one's got a sprout on it. That's not good. You don't want to find any sprouts. I had a couple swabs down on Ashton's field too. And I couldn't get up because they were too green. And I have some sprouts and that stuff too. Some colors, some kernels, little different colors, and that's the reason. Why, the reason why is uh, some of the bleach ones were on top and took more of the rain, and some of the ones here, like this one, has more color. They were underneath and didn't get as much rain, so that's the reason why you're seeing kind of a bag of cats of different colors. Okay, that's the reason why. Now I do have my filler plates out. I had my filler plates in. I have two filler plates on each concave right at the front uh, for wheat. I had them in for mine and I think that I was doing a little better job. Uh, I don't have them with me because I left them at the farm, North Farm, and I'm a little ways away from that. I could run, send someone for them, I guess, if need be. So, but it's still not bad. It's still not bad. All right. Let's stop, let's stop our yapping here and let's get over there and uh, start cracking with the rest of them. Cindy is uh, running that combine. When you're a family farm, everyone runs a combine. Hopefully Chapel can run a combine here. Uh, well, next year would be awesome, but I just don't think that's realistic yet. Getting a little dusted out here. Day outside. 
So I don't know. Well, I was gonna say I don't know how long we're gonna keep getting these nice days, but uh, it seems to me I did check this morning, and uh, this week is kind of our last week of the mid to high 20s. Then I think we're gonna go to the high teens. We're gonna drop about 10 degrees the following week and the following two weeks after that, I believe. So that kind of sucks. It would have been nice to stay nice and warm and open up and have a beautiful fall, but you know what? I guess I'll still take high teens. And hopefully we can go on our canola, maybe even tomorrow. I don't know. We'll probably try it again. Why as well? You know, we already have like a half a truck of tough canola. Why as well make it a full truck? <laughs> Donovan was just saying, how come he doesn't have GPS? His bubble isn't on the cab. He forgot it on the swath. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. And since they, they didn't have GPS on the swath, or they're running like an 88 or an 87 degree angle, so it's not working for us here either. So we're just kind of both freehanding it here. Not bad for freehanding. Doesn't happen very often to you guys because we're always on GPS. I like GPS, especially when you have a straight cut header. You don't have a big room to party there, remember? We got a pretty big room to party here, so we can freehand away. So the trick is if we're gonna stop, then we clean out. Then I'm gonna hit it again, stop it instantly. Yeah, I figured that out. Then we're gonna try not to swing into that power line up there. Okay, I think we finished this little corner of the field. Cindy's gonna dump two. You have to be a little more careful because their augers aren't quite as high. To dump high side, it's a little tight. So they gotta come in and make sure he comes in low side to dump. All right, now where? Well, the day is going down, things are going pretty good, and there is somebody out walking in my field. Actually, it's not my field, it's my father-in-law's field. Look at this guy. Who the heck is that? It's not a grain cart operator, because uh, Don always in the cart. It's not a combine operator, because the combines are all going. Who the burly is this guy? <laughs> Who the heck? <laughs> just a friendly neighborhood, got the random just, dude. Just a random guy out here in the field. Scratching the ground, looking at Scratching the them. ground with his butt in the air, trying to figure out what the heck. <laughs> I was like, it's a moose. No, it's not. It's an elk. No. It's a moose sometimes. <laughs> it's like, what the heck? Oh, man. No, we've been privileged with the honor of the Ron up here. Ron is riding around with us in our in our combine cab. You guys believe that? It's an it's, it's the honor for me, Mike. I don't think so. I, I'm not I don't think it. so. I don't think so. It's uh, this is the guy I keep. I'm pretty sure he's blocked me. I, I, I keep. Been. I keep. Being, I keep being like, uh, Ron. How do I do this? Ron. How do I do that? Ron. How do I start it? Ron. How do I engage it? Ron. How do I reverse it? <laughs> Ron. How do I make dinner? Yeah. <laughs> Ron. We've tried rice. Now what? Oh man. No, it's been awesome. So uh, yeah, he just got up here, I guess, and he's passing through. So we thought he would stop and say hi, and I'm very appreciative. And we'll try not to get into too much trouble here as the evening goes on. Oh, we never. Ah, uh, well, uh, well, there's no guarantees. There's no guarantees. Yeah, that's a fair point. We didn't get into too much trouble here. Yep. What do we got here? Where's these tie rods? Right here. So right underneath there. So you got that bullhead? Yeah. And then there's two spacers there. 
take your 30 mil gun, zap it out, pull those spaces off, zap it right back in. Because that's your steering stop. This basically oh, your casting as it steers, it just bottoms out on that bolt. So I just take the bolt out, that's yep. it? Well, so you take your bolt out, remove the spaces, okay. put the bolt back in. Oh, awesome. Because this thing isn't turning very sharp. The other one back home turns way sharper. Exactly, yep. Okay, well, that's the fix then. All so right. This guy's awesome. I'm trying to think right now if there's anything else that I need to ask Ron. There probably will be, but I'll oh, just text him. I'm sure Madison sent you up. <laughs> yeah. just, just, just small things. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. All right, man, it's been awesome. Thank, Thank you, buddy. Out. We'll Appreciate out again. Oh, yeah. See you later. And we're off. Where's my horn? Ron's awesome. I first met Ron actually down at the, uh, the Kentucky Farm Show. And then he came up last year and rode around with me the Ideal Combines and we just like talking farming. That's what farmers do. You talk farming. All right, let's go see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into over here. So we literally like made one pass and Ashton brought out hot stew. So uh, we're all gonna shut down here for uh, 20 minutes and have some supper and Ron just left. I actually texted him, I'm like, hey, turn that boat around, buddy, turn that boat around, and uh, he's just a little bit too far down the line, and he wants to get to a location here yet tonight, so uh, next time, next time, but um, anyways, I guess we'll go grab a little bit to eat. Normally, we don't do that, FYI. Um, typically, we uh, everyone packs their lunch, and we're good for the day, but... Uh, I do believe that my in-laws like to stop their combines to eat. It's not something that I do or our family does, but yay. But when, when in Rome. <laughs> All right, guys, you have yourself a good one. I'm gonna let you go. Uh, the little, the little tight little chapels out here too. I wanna go and kiss them all up like crazy. And uh, I will let you guys go. I've yatted on enough, but uh, Thanks, Ron, for popping in, and we will catch you all on the flip side. Adios, amigos.